even though my parents are still the official monarchs of the kingdom, I'll be overseeing daily operations of the city. They've given me a tremendous responsibility, and it's going to be a big mantle to bear. That's why I want you to roll by my side while they are away. Me? Well, you are my consort, after all. I don't know, Sal, but we're in the middle of a war. If I don't help fight Eggman, who will? There are many who are willing to stand against him. It doesn't have to be you, Sonic. You can't go risking your life in battle if we're going to have a real future together. I don't want you to do it anymore. Stay with me. Please, my love. Say you will. Sorry, Sal. I can't. I should have known you'd be selfish. Selfish? Selfish? I sacrificed my life to the planet and up on the far side of the universe because if it did everything I could to get only back a little here later. How is that selfish? Do you know what it was like believing you were dead? It completely broke my heart. Watching Mecha hurt you brought it all back. And I refuse to have my heart broken again, Sonic. What's more important to you anyway? Punching out Robotnik's lights or being with me? Niagara, as in you cry a lot. Woo! Yeah! Yeah. Yo, yeah. what's up? Yeah. Go, John Gray, go, go, John Gray, go, go, go. What's up now? <laughs> I'm the artist, kill Nazis in my way, you know. I'm gonna demonize Sally Acorn, you know. You better calm down, John Gray. I'm talking about a whole lot party, shipping Sonny and me. Mr. Flynn, you don't mind if we kill Nazis, you know. IDW will never be the same, cause we got John Gray, John Gray, John Gray in the house. John Gray, John Gray, John Gray, check it out! That's right, I'm in the house! He's gonna take the script and change it! Draw the art and rearrange it! You know, you better understand! We got John Gray in the house! John Gray in the house! I'm the man! Yo, I had the jewel, I got some goals. I sold a little weed, but I could never sell my soul. And when I'm in LA, you find me out in Lil Toe. Come up, vocal with my ramen, I'ma need another blow, let's go. modern age, in the beginning of the shipping war, when the ships first lengthened, one minifigure stood, burned by the Empress of Shipageddon, his soul blistered by the fires of Tsunami and tainted beyond the session. He chose the path of perpetual torment. In his ravenous hatred, he found no peace, and with boiling blood, he scoured the internet seeking vengeance against the fan brats who had wronged him. Tempered by the fires of Tsunami, his eye and will remain steadfast through the passage that preys upon the weak. And in his conquest against the blackened souls of the Sally haters, his prowess was shown. In his crusade, the meme nippas bestowed upon his terrible power and speed. And with his might, he crushed the obsidian pillars of the Sanami temples. He wore the crown of the Sonic fanbase. Those that tasted the bite of his sword named him the Sanami Slayer. Hello there, at everyone. Before we begin this video, I think it's important to talk about something real quick. And that something is politics. Now, I've made political jokes in the past. A lot of them ironic, a lot of them not as ironic. And a lot of them are pretty tongue-in-cheek. For example, I make a lot of Ben Shapiro jokes, but a lot of them are apolitical and pretty ironic. Now, personally, I love Ben Shapiro. I think he's a brilliant speaker. But at the same time, I've made plenty of jokes that are at the expense of him and his followers, mainly because I'm poking fun at the lack of self-awareness some of them have. They're jokes that are really absurd and can't really be taken seriously whatsoever in any sort of political direction. The closest to actual political affiliation I've made in my videos is back in my Jaws Song Lever video from two years ago, which included both anti-Trump and anti-Hillary Clinton statements. Statements that didn't age well whatsoever and were more made because they were statements that were edgy at the time, and I wanted to be edgy. Honestly, I cringe when I watch that video nowadays because of those statements. They're 
<laughs> They're really bad. But anyways, just to warn you guys, we'll be diving into some politics, some SJW roasting, some libtar destruction. And if you can't handle that, um, please be mature. Don't hate on anyone because of their political differences. Because that's a dumb thing to do. Don't do that. Anyways, without further ado, Cory Baxter, I mean John Gray. Now, those who watch my content may be going, who is this cringy Sonic fan? Well, this cringy Sonic fan actually works for IDW and worked for Archie in the past. And yes, we are talking about the Sonic comics here. So this guy gets paid to draw Sonic. And I won't lie, he is a very talented artist. I'm not here to hate on him as an artist. I think he deserves his pay. I mean, the guy gets paid to draw Sonic and he gets paid to draw Mickey Mouse. I mean, I'd kill for that job. But the problems lie with him as a person. First of all, he's the guy who pretty much started the whole shipping war. This is someone who pretty much killed Sally Acorn. This guy is the reason Sally Acorn was demonized for so long. Secondly, his demonization of people with different political opinions is just as terrible. His behavior on Twitter is on a near true love heart level. And trust me, you don't want want to get on a true love heart level. Also, by the way, thanks to Alex Hedgefox and Lance Jerkoff for giving me information for this video. They both sent me some really good articles and tweets, as well as other good information that I wouldn't have found on my own. So, without further ado, let's destroy this libtard sandcastle. Now, a lot of you probably already know what the slap is, especially if you're fans of my channel. But for those who don't know, it's basically the scene that all Saw and Amy fan brats use to write Sally off as a slut bitch. She is just a fucking retarded slut bitch. Now, a lot of Saw and Amy fans won't even know the context of the scene because they are the shittiest researchers on the planet. And on jaw, these fucking sheep need their Saw and Amy evidence. But even in context, the slap scene itself really is odd, to say the least. Now, the slap itself occurs in Sonic the Hedgehog number 134, which is meant to be this HUGE BREAKUP ISSUE, WHOA! And what Sonic Amy fans don't understand is that in this issue, Sonic has been rumored dead for a year, and also his arm was broken, and Sally didn't want him fighting anymore. But even in this context, if you know Sally as a character, if you've watched any episode of Sad AM, you will come to the realization that this is really odd for her to do. Sally is meant to be a tough militaristic character. She's built to be a leader, but she's also able to keep most of her composure. So to see this tough, strong female character suddenly do shit like this. It's like watching Doom Annihilation squished down into one small scene. So clearly this scene is extremely out of character for Sally. So how come it exists? Who did this and why? Now, it's really easy to go to the Sonic Wiki and look up the writer for this issue and throw all the blame on Carl Bowlers because that's who wrote the issue. And for those who don't know, this is Carl Bowlers. And no, it's not MC Ride from Death Grips. Responsibility's cool, but there's more things in life like getting your dick. Fucking and it's easy to go onto his Sonic Wikia page and then scroll on down to the little trivia section and look at the little trivia they have there and then realize that Sonic Amy could have been canon in the comics, but that idea ended up being scrapped. And it's so easy to just throw the blame on the Carl Bowlers. It's just so easy to blame him for demonizing a character that people love and respect for the sake of making his shipping canon. However, that's just the easy way out. And my man Alex Hedgefox actually messaged Carl Bowlers, asking him what happened with that scene. And this is what happened. Hey, Mr. Bowlers, would it be okay if I ask you something about one of the stories you wrote for Archie Sonic? Okay, if I can remember. Do you remember issue 134, the infamous issue where Sally slaps Sonic? Yes. What was the motivation behind the slap in particular? I think I know what it was, but dozens of fans interpret it very differently. I had nothing to do with that. I never asked for that in the script. John Gray did that on his own lol. You didn't do the slap? The issue said you wrote the story. Yes, I wrote the story, but the artist took it upon himself to draw that. 
I never said anywhere in any script I ever wrote that Sally slaps Sonic. So the slap was his fault? He didn't like the idea of Sally and Sonic together. He's in the Amy Rose camp. Not a Sonali fan? Yeesh. People thought it was you because people have found your unused Archie Sonic plans. Which includes a story post-breakup where Sonic and Amy kiss. Yes. I wanted to keep things interesting but I never wanted Sally to come across like a psycho bitch. Think about it. Did I ever portray her as having a temper like that in earlier issues? No you did not, but it's funny cause that's usually how Amy was portrayed in the video games. But now that begs the question, what was supposed to happen instead of the slap? Like, was Sally just yelling at how could you be so selfish and Sonic just sort of snaps? Do you have a copy of the original script? I'm deeply curious. She was just supposed to ask him the question. I don't have the script anymore. John might still have it. So, for those who are kind of lost, let me explain this to you. So, Carl Bowlers, who wrote issue 134, is saying that the slap is not only not his fault, but wasn't even in the original script, and was the fault of the artist who was in the quote quote Amy Rose camp. That artist, of course, being John Gray. I guess you outsmarted me, man. I guess, uh, <laughs> guess I gotta hand it to you. Now, some of you may have done your homework, and some of you may be pointing out to me that John Gray did actually bring this up on his DeviantArt. On May 22nd, 2013, you know, nine years after the damage has been done, John Gray posted this onto his DeviantArt account. It's a picture of the original pencils of the infamous slap. And in the description, he posts an explanation about it. Here are some highlights from that. You know what? I can't keep hiding from this page and I think it's long past time that I stop being so damn apologetic about it. It's a bad page. In fact, it is a terrible page for numerous, insurmountable, cumulative reasons, but you know what? I didn't write it, and it's not bad because I didn't write it, it's bad for other reasons many of which I helped contribute to. This page single-handedly encapsulates what was wrong with the Sonic comic both verbally, artistically and editorially, yeah, I said it, back in the day. Anyway, I was told to draw Sally slapping Sonic, so that's what I did. I was a freelance artist, I get paid to interpret scripts by art. If the script tells you to draw a character like they are blacking out and slapping the taste out of someone's mama's mouth then you draw that character slapping the taste out of someone's mama's mouth and then some. I guess I must have succeeded in spades with that scene because somehow the entire Sonic comic community cracked itself in half, launched itself into the sun and then collapsed into itself like a black hole because I still see the colored version of this image along with Sally's crazy cat lady style tirade get posted up everywhere like the phantom equivalent of a scarlet letter. But you know what, I wear that scarlet letter proudly cues, regardless of the motives behind it, regardless of the fervor it caused and regardless of the rancor it still incites Archie Sonic fans with to this day. That, in the end, is what art, bad or good which is subjective depending on the eye of the beholder, is supposed to do. It'll make you care about the characters. And the results of this page either made many fans either realize they'd stopped caring altogether or made other fans realize that things needed to change in soon. And when people make fun of it online, I ain't mad at that either. Cuz now I know better and deep down. I make fun of it too. So, Domsville, this seems okay to me. Yeah, I agree with you. He regrets it and he's learned from it. Except, uh, no, uh, there are some holes to this, actually. For one thing, Carl Bowler said that the slap wasn't in the original script. But John Gray is saying it is. John Gray said he was only doing what he was told to do. But Carl Bowlers is telling us that it was only because John Gray was in the quote-unquote Amy Rose camp. So which one is it? Well, Alex actually brought this up to Carl Bowlers. Here's that conversation. Hey, Carl, you said you didn't write the slap and it was John Gray, right? Well, I found this. He says that you did write the slap. Who's right here? You saying John edited because he was in the Amy Rose camp? Or John saying that he was told to draw Sally slapping Sonic because it was in the script? I am right. So John is lying? That statement isn't true. But you said he'd corroborate that he edited the slap in himself and he isn't corroborating. Did you ask him? No, I have tried getting a hold of him on Facebook, Twitter, and DeviantArt. And it turns out Mr. Gray has blocked me. 
he knows what he did. And that's all she wrote. I did leave out one or two minor details in both the DeviantArt post and Alex's conversation, mainly due to time. So I'll link everything down below. But anyways, isn't that a little suspicious? That John Gray tries to explain himself, and yet when somebody asks him questions, he blocks them. Hmm, it's like you're trying to hide something, John Gray. And I know, I know, innocent until proven guilty, but the odds aren't stacked up in his favor. You'd think that if he really wanted to move on from this, he'd explain himself a bit more, maybe give a bit more context, maybe even throw Carl Bowlers under the bus a little bit, but uh, no, doesn't do that. So uh, this guy supposedly made Sally Slap Sonic because he was a Sonic Amy fan. What a fucking fan brat cunt. The original fan brat cunt. And it's weird how much of a joke he takes it. Like, okay, yeah, shipping. Not very serious. But reading his own DeviantArt post, it seems like he's extremely unaware of the damage he actually caused. Like, dude, you are responsible for at least half of the toxicity in the Sonic Amy fandom. You are the reason Sonic Amy fans harass other people over different opinions. And I know it's not the only reason. I mean, Son Amy fans are literally retarded. They'll call Sally Acorn a Mary Sue with no evidence to back it up other than she's a princess. But I'm surprised that John Gray isn't more apologetic about it, because he made so many people hate Sally Acorn for a really dumb reason. And to prove the impact of this scene on the Son Amy fanbase, I'm gonna phone a friend who is actually a Son Amy fan, and who is negatively impacted by the slap. So take it away, my special guest friend. Hey guys! Yeah! It's me! I am just gonna say my short opinion about this whole slap situation. As I have said in my Amy Rose rant, unfortunately, I was one of the victims who hated Sally because of that slap and thought she was the way the artist portrayed her as. I also hated Sally partly because it's an Amy. But it was mostly the slap that made me hate her and convinced me that's how she is as a character. And this comic cover where it looks like Sally's pointing and laughing at Sonic didn't really give me a better impression of her. But luckily, Amy Chan told me the whole situation and I remember as a kid, I did see one episode where Sonic was upset about his uncle called Chuck signing with Eggman against his will and Sally comforted him. Which made me eventually stop hating her. And as a Sanami fan who don't ship Sanali, I do like Sally as a character and don't mind people who like the pairing. So, um, yeah, the whole slap scene is definitely a misleading scene for those who haven't watched the Sonic City M cartoon and don't know Sally as a character herself. And I have watched some pages before the slap, and let me just say that not only was Sally extremely out of character, even Sonic was as well. Not as much, but he still didn't act like the Sonic we all know and love. So for any Sanami fans who don't know Sally, take that slap scene a plain of salt and don't judge Sally as a character based on that slap scene. Wow, thanks my special guest friend. So as you can tell, this scene had a very negative impact on the reputation of Sally Acorn. And if Carl Bowlers is right, then John Gray did this maliciously to destroy Sally Acorn as a character. Because once again, he's supposedly in the quote unquote Amy Rose camp. And if that's true, I gotta give a big fuck you to John Gray. I mean, John, dude, you literally did this for the sake of your ship. That is sick, malicious, and immature, as well as an abuse of power. And let's say that John Gray is right to an extent. He still fucked over the fandom. If the Sonic fanbase is Dubai, then John Gray is Captain Walker. This wasn't my fault. I thought my duty was to protect this city from the storm. But maybe I'm being too hard on John. Maybe he's just, you know, been following orders this whole time. There's conflicting information, and we don't know who's truly telling the truth here. It's not like John Gray has a history of playing the victim card, or manipulating the truth, or different information or anything. Except, 
he does. My dick is shaped like a rectangular prism. You know I love molesting kids with autism. Come and fucking get me, you white ass fascist Nazi pig. So I think it's obvious to say that I don't hate people because of political affiliation. And I also think it's obvious to say that I'm not a racist. I don't give a shit about color or anything. So in case if John Gray watches this video and calls me a racist Republican, uh, that's not true. I'm sure as hell not racist. I'm sure as hell not sexist. And I may be a conservative, but I'm not Republican. If anything, I lean more towards libertarian. I say all this, so when John Gray inevitably calls me a Nazi, we'll know he's lying. But anyways, onto his Twitter behavior. So here's the good news. He's not as bad as True Love for 94. He gets decently close to it, but he doesn't send death threats, which is good. And he also mainly whines over politics, which I mean, at least it's important, more important than Son Amy, but that doesn't make his behaviors or his actions any less petty. So let's read some of his tweets and see what this man has to say. Thank goodness for chain blockers. When I see an artist I follow arguing with, blocking nuisances over something extraordinarily stupid or mean, especially if it's comics related, I always know where, who they associate with because I know exactly what accounts I've chain blocked. Oh, we do go into some true love heart territory. This guy is blocking people with different opinions. Whoa! I don't even know the fucking context, dude. I'd like some examples, please. Not only that, but he's not just blocking people. He's chain blocking them. And what chain blocking is is downloading a program or a browser extension that allows you to not only block an individual, but also their followers. Basically, ascended blocking. Dude, man, True Love Heart's gotta learn this. Dude, ascended blocking, chain blocking, this is crazy. My man, imagine you can't take criticism, so you have to download a fucking Chrome extension to block not just that person, but their followers too. Anyways, let's read the rest of this thread. Again, cross-pollination between Twitter trouble accounts are a constant. Chaining doesn't clear out every ass hat, but it does wipe out the repeat offending dregs. They all swim in the same filthy pools and they never ever mean to do anyone any good at the end of the day. Everyone withdraws into their own small gated community afraid of a larger forum. They stay inside their little ponds, leaking whatever truth suits them into the growing cesspool of society at large. To repeat, no one is entitled to your time or your patience except those you allow to, to have access. You don't deserve slash didn't ask to be harassed or bothered or repeatedly annoyed, attacked and we all have better, more important things to do throughout the day. Dude, you are chain blocking people. Like, okay, maybe blocking one person isn't terrible. It's cowardly and petty, but you know, whatever. But you're blocking a bunch of followers, people you don't even know. You don't even know if they're genuinely following that person or not. You're shooting your gun without aiming it, dude. To repeat, no one is entitled to your time or your patience except those you allow to, to have access. You don't deserve slash didn't ask to be harassed or bothered or repeatedly annoyed, attacked and we all have better, more important things to do throughout the day. I mean it really does kill me that they all follow the same person, persons without fail. And that person, diversity in comics for those who haven't figured it out, is always at the center of the Twitter comics hate parade. It'd be funny if it weren't sad pointless and pathetic. So, first of all, John Gray is talking about diversity and the comics, a YouTube channel that now goes by the name Comics Matter, with your boy, Zack! I don't think very strongly of him, I'm not subscribed to him or anything, but his content's fine. A, a bit boring for me, but it's okay. I don't religiously follow him or anything, but this does seem more like John Gray can't handle different opinions. Oh man, people talking about conservatism against my diversity? You know what I'm gonna do? Download a fucking program to block everyone! Wow, you really showed them, buddy. And then the extra cross-pollination with blatantly out racists, homophobes, xenophobes, and Nazis too? Jesus. I love interacting with people and having fun but this social media platform is a real mess at its peak. At least you know who some PPL are right out the gate. 
I guess. Damn, pulling out the old Nazi card. How professional, you know? Watch out, we got a real BJ Blaskowitz over here. So anyways, the website Bounding Into Comics, a website I had never heard of until Lance Jerkoff sent me some information, published an article titled, IDW Publishing's Jonathan H. Gray Calls Comic Fans Racist, Homophobes, Xenophobes, and Nazis. And John Gray, the master of criticism, responded with a Twitter thread, oh no, where he had attacks the entire fucking website. Reminder that Bounding Into Comics is part of the comics get clique that openly incites and spreads harassment against creators of color and those who do not tolerate what they stand for. Comicsgate is a hate group and Bounding is not a trustworthy or reputable source of news. So what Comicsgate is, it's just Gamergate with comics, that's all it is. And before someone calls me a bigoted Comicsgate supporter, the thing is I don't care about Comicsgate. I don't care. I don't care. But even as a person who doesn't care whatsoever, I can officially say that after my research, Comic State is not about color. It's about not forcing political messages into comics. That's what it's about. It's not about race or color or transphobia or sexism. It's about not wanting to force political messages into fucking Batman. I don't even care about the issue. I just want my blue talking hedgehog. I've long since chain blocked them and their followers from following me. BC they are known to spread campaigns of harassment under the guise of news. This allows their followers to bombard their targets targets for them without repercussions. Please do not fall for it. Block accordingly. Oh boy, here come the chain blocks again, dude. This time, he's telling everyone to block accordingly. Yeah, the best way to prevent drama and hatred is to download a Chrome extension where you block everyone. Yeah, good job, John. Good job. It's also why, when people ask me to unblock them, I check who they are first and usually don't if I can't verify them. I know exactly what accounts I've chain blocked and why. John, you blocked them. They can't contact you to unblock them if you already blocked them, you fucking idiot. You are rarded. You, sir, are rarded. Stuff like this is why I speak out. They attacked me directly a while ago, and since I wouldn't give them the time of day, they've decided to attack my friends and bosses for no reason at all. This is why I talk very openly against racism, homophobia, transphobia, etc. No, John, it wasn't for no reason. I don't mean to insult your quote-unquote friends and bosses, but there is some shady stuff going on. Like Ian Flynn telling his supporters to attack other people. But that's for another time. I'll save that for another video or something. Also, um... <clears throat> Only racism, transphobia, and homophobia? Where the fuck is sexism? Don't tell me you put it down in etc, you woman-hating pig. You gotta respect women! 2019! Out my hands. This is the kind of stuff creators who oppose comics gate, especially black gay and or women creators have to deal with daily in many cases. Comicsgate seeks to harass them all through foul means and has attacked far more creators than me. Bounding is simply a mouthpiece for that. I mean, I guess, except for the fact that one of the writers for Bounding in Comics is Katie Gregerson, who is a woman. Again, block and go about your business. At the end of day, none of the hassle or rigmarole is worth it. Dude, you called comic fans xenophobes and Nazis. You didn't expect backlash from that? There was going to be a hassle anyways. You're playing the victim card at this point. You're going around chain blocking random people, calling them xenophobes and Nazis, and all of a sudden, you're acting like they're oppressive? You can't just call people out and then play the victim and people call you out, dude. That's not how it fucking works. Improve your behavior or shut the fuck up. Finger your dog or your sister, yeah, it's all the same. I am Lil Float the Baby Raper, that's my name. So fuck politics, what's the conclusion here? Is John Gray guilty of the slap or not? Well, based on his track record of playing the victim card when he's in trouble, and the fact that Carl Bowers is telling a very different story, and the fact that he blocked Alex Hedgefox for asking him, the evidence is unfortunately not looking good. Now, after all of this, do I want John Gray out of a job? 
no. Truth be told, he's a very talented artist, and he deserves his pay. But unfortunately, I can't respect him, and I don't think he's a good person. And I do think he needs a reevaluation, especially after the shit he pulled with Sally Acorn. Overall, while John Gray is a talented artist, he is not a respectable person. So in the end, fuck John Gray, fuck Sonic 134, and fuck Sonic IDW, because that shit's underwhelming. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked this video, leave a like down below. If you want to see more content, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to support me, don't buy Sonic IDW. Instead, support my Patreon. A man's gotta buy Minecraft. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next Dumbsville video. They say low flow where you been at I'm just sucking some dick. I be playing Minecraft with my thumb on her clip. Two dicks got me horny in like two different ways. Oh shit I fucked up and I just caught AIDS.